Hello. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you. Um, yeah, why don't you just tell us a little bit about your story and what brought you to this point? Whatever you want to share, whatever you think is important. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think uh, life story is always a problem, isn't it? <laughs> because it's your past. Mm. And um, when we tell our life story, the the listener creates an image, right? And then that image is the problem, which is I'm sure we'll talk about, you know, this image of uh, reality. So the appearance of me is one thing, um, but the human being uh, is another. So our life story is always changing. And for me in particular, yeah, it has been changing a lot. And I think anyone who kind of takes this path of knowing oneself or taking this uh, journey of spiritual awakening, uh, yeah, the story will change a lot. Um, mm. Maybe not so much if you don't or if you cling on to that past so much uh, and you stay rigid, then it may not change. <laughs> but yeah, a lot has been changing. But generally, on the very superficial layer of my uh, my ego self that I call Gene, <laughs> um, I was generally a just a normal uh, teenage boy until about 18 uh, when I finished. Well, I dropped out of university. I went back years later but in those few years I really had this whole you know what is reality who am I uh, just this huge kind of journey of spiritual awakening and what is all of this and really going deeper and deeper I started first with um, lucid dreaming uh, and then I realized deeper truths about the dream states and that you know, in reality, like me and you speaking now, we're mostly still dreaming. We're in our own dream and we're both trying to figure out what is beyond this dream. So with that uh, kind of spirit, I then looked into astral projection and I then, I had a lot of success with that as well. So I had many lucid dreams, but then I also then experienced astral projection, which was really, uh, which was good to help me discern that it really is not a dream. It's really something real, uh, information that you can learn and apply into your waking life. Um, yeah, I'm saying all of this very uh, in a short way, but a few years down the line after that, I find or I meet uh, a Mexican friend who introduced me to the Gnostic teachings. And I really just studied and practiced, practiced with him for about five years. And that was just really deepened everything uh, a lot. Um, after those five years, I traveled the world quite a bit um, and kind of deepened my own path yeah, as a sort of hermit really looking within trying to apply all of these teachings and all of these things and experiences that I've been having and here I am today uh yeah moving countries once again <laughs> soon but um I guess I'm I'm at a stage where uh I I feel not feel like a need so much but I just I feel uh, an impulse or a joyful impulse to share with others and uh, mm. share with other people and interact with people. And that was quite a difficult step for me because for about 10 years, I was really quite a uh, a hermit and I really just wanted to be by myself and I wasn't interested in the external world. But after a while, I really saw, and kind of with my own awakening, you know, your heart kind of opens to people and you really want to share and connect and also, you know, learn from other people too. We are all, we're all, uh, I think any true teacher knows that we're all teachers and we're all students at the mm -hmm. same time. So yes, that is very summarized image of my <laughs> my journey yeah I like it <laughs> um yeah. yeah so we'll get into this I mean I do want to ask a few more questions about this yeah anything. like you finding I want to get a bit more personal before we move into these other topics 
What was this experience? And I know you and I have talked about this before, but for public conversation sake, yeah. um, what was this experience like in the realm of like, we're talking about like what spirituality actually is like definitively the sciences of it and what it's not today. And we'll get into that. But um, yeah. what was this transition you made to uh, beginning to astral project? And also, do you mind just telling people the difference between lucid dreaming and astral projecting? I think a lot of people, a lot of people do know from experience or have experiences, and then a lot of people don't. And I don't, not that one is better than the other, just mm. so that we have clear definitions. I think this is also really important in the spirituality topic. Right. Yeah. And it is, it is tricky and it's a sort of, uh, as you know, it's like a narrow way. It's a narrow way of understanding because dreams, the realm or the dimension of dreams is very similar to, uh, the astral realm too. Mm -hmm. And they sort of both take place in this non-physical aspect or dimension of our consciousness. So a dream, just to try and explain more simply, a dream is a place where we go uh, every time we go to sleep and the environment which we see and experience is based on our own subjectivity or right. our ego right and memories and you know as psychology says generally uh, we dream the same things and feelings and emotions and thoughts that we played out in waking life and it's just repeating it again while we're sleeping so yeah. Yeah, really no different from waking life. We're, we're dreaming while awake, daydreaming all day, as we can all observe very easily. And then when we go to sleep at night, we're also not daydreaming, but now night dreaming. It's just the same. The physical body is just asleep. Right. So, and I, oh, yeah. Hmm. I read somewhere, what was I doing? I don't know if I was working on the app or what I was doing, but I read somewhere and was so brilliant maybe i read it in like an article on glorian i don't know but um that when we're awake in the daytime the will is asleep for the most part three percent mm. awake the will is asleep in a way because it's asleep to the egoic processes but the intellect is awake in a way the intellect is more yeah. actively there and then when we sleep right. Our intellect sleeps and the will comes alive, but it's coming alive through these mechanical mechanisms of our ego. And I thought that was such an interesting way to put it that like the will, we're kind of asleep to our will during the day, but awake to our intellect. And at night, we're kind of asleep to our intellect and awake to our will. The problem is right. not really having that. Could, Integration. Like, yeah, exactly. Mm, yeah. yeah. Yes. So we're kind of like, uh, robots uh and if you can imagine like a, a an android robot with like a little <laughs> person inside the head and uh in the head you know he can have all these thoughts and he's just kind of lazing around on his chair and just looking at images or whatever and the machine is just moving by itself you know so this work is really about okay let's get to know this machine Let's uh, start to understand all of the programming and actually control all the levers and start to control this machine. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then, uh, and then eventually down the path, uh, you know, we start to become more, you know, have that more conscious uh, and active willpower. Right. Because so, I think yeah. a lot of people, <laughs> the first time our mutual friend told me that I was asleep, I don't remember. he was like, you're not human. I was like, what? I am. I'm human. I'm awake. Look, I'm awake. I'm talking mm -hmm. to you. What do you mean I'm sleeping? And I think a lot of people might yeah. have that question too when they're listening. They're like, what? I'm awake. What do you mean? And then some people will really be like, I'm awake. Like, I know the Illuminati is real. I know this is fake. I know like all these weird things. I know about aliens and all this stuff. All probably very true things, not denying. Yeah. But I just want to like, without going so deep into what a awakened consciousness is and we can go there i just want to tell people that if you are truly awake if your consciousness is awake mine's not awake i hope it's more than three percent awake i hope on its best day it's ten percent awake if i'm lucky i think but like 
there's this idea that people are humanity as a whole is 3% awakened consciousness, 97% mechanical. I'm finding this to be mostly true. Of course, people have variation, but that's like the norm. And that yeah. I just, just to prove this, like if people really want to test this um, in themselves, obviously you can do this through self-observation and a lot of inner work, but if you are truly, if you have truly awakened consciousness, if your machine is truly awakened, you will be awake when you sleep. When you go to sleep at night, you won't ever fall asleep. You will, your body mm. will fall asleep. You'll move into the astral dimension for sure, but you will not lose consciousness at one point. You will be awake yeah. and aware and objective the more awakened your consciousness is. So if you're not awake when you're asleep, people, like 99.99% .99 of us, you're not awake yet. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, a good a good way, good way to yeah because if you're awake here to, to you're awake in all dimensions basically um yeah so i just want to yeah. leave and that's people the idea. with that <laughs> yeah that's the idea in the long run yeah but um it doesn't also mean that you know if we're not awake every night there's not a good amount of uh consciousness already being liberated totally, yeah so it's totally. a, it's a that's the huge journey and and what and really when you start to go in this path um and you really start to awaken more and more those experiences at night will be way more relevant to your path and helping you to right. overcome the personal obstacles and and challenges that you have that are getting in the way of awakening more and more consciousness yeah right so for example people might have a very profound astral projection experience this out of body experience uh and then they don't have it again for like a month or a year mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. usually because they've not integrated or fully learned what they were you know shown in that experience and uh, yeah right. so usually each each experience shows us something there's always something that we can meditate on to extract the uh the wisdom or the information that was kind of sent to us into our our consciousness so right and it's also like yeah. a, pro a progressive thing it's not like you go from three percent to hundred percent awakened consciousness yeah. overnight and i think if we think of this as like making our machine our sacred machine more awakened like if you were to take a car that's like not been driven for like years and is like in the you know in the garage like you know it takes maybe it turns on one point but then it goes off for like a few and you have to like change this part and that part and i think that's kind of what that process is is taking that old like rusted car and then making it like shiny and new and driving great again but that takes a while if you have yeah. like this old piece of machinery or yeah i guess yeah, yeah it's yeah, this process exactly, yeah. um yeah so so maybe i should say what <laughs> astral projection is <laughs> yes <laughs> uh, yeah so th this is um, a reason why I like to commonly describe uh, lucid dreaming and astral projection all under this bubble of uh, non-physical experiences. Because if you can imagine you're in a dream or recall one of your most recent dreams, um, or imagine, you know, where you are now, if you look around, this is a dream, right? Uh, and your body, physical body is just like asleep and you're in a new environment and you can feel that in the dream, you can inherently feel that everything you're creating and seeing, if you're in touch with yourself enough, in touch with this human machine enough, you can feel that you're projecting this reality, this environment around you. And so quite an advanced practice uh, that comes with time is you can, just in the same way in physical waking life, when you're daydreaming, you can just snap out of a daydream in a lucid dream you can snap out of a dream and you can start to see you can start to see the environment and the things around you the objects the people from your subconscious dissolve and then what happens if you're not dreaming but you're still asleep right only then after that you start to see more objective realities uh, and they start to feel more energetic you start to, you're not able to control them. Like in a dream, you might see or talk to beings, loved ones who have passed away. Uh, you really just start to learn information and you, it's really, a, you're learning new things, new information because it, because it's not, 
it's not from your subconscious. And it's that's why it's always, uh, you'll read a lot about, you know, with astral projection and out of body experiences, it's a really profound experience. And it's a life changing experience, because uh, it really touches you like, deep in your core somewhere, you know, and because you're really in this, this feeling of, you know, wow, there's this whole other reality within myself that is, it's not dreams, it's not just uh, psychology, subjectivity, it's a real place where I can actually, you know, gain new information and, and visit actual places. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's almost like the dream is more of this, um, sort of like the subjective um, self-imposed simulation in a way. Of course, sometimes there is objective right. things coming in there because it is still in this other dimension. Um, but then this astral projection is more of a shared experience out of your body. And you do learn in that moment. I mean, we can theorize this all day long that I am not the body. And you could definitely reach knowing that through direct experience, through meditation, for sure. Um, yeah. But you yeah, really but know it projection. when you astral project, you say, oh, right. but my consciousness is here. And that's my, right. my body on the bed. And yeah, so then I'm not yeah, my it's body. It's a real like, real slap in the face, like, boom, like this is this is a yeah. reality. This is a real experience. It can be if a person isn't is so like entrenched in the intellect too much, they can wake up and if they start to think and think and think, then yeah, the mind can start to uh, doubt it, start to uh, think it's not real, and then you know they kind of lose the 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 intuitive sense of what was really happening. But there are other means of what you can do. You know, uh, um, I've come out of body before. Uh, I went to a place while in the astral out of my body i observed something very specific uh, this girl eating this packet of uh, blue cheese and onion crisps and <laughs> wearing her pajamas sat with a friend i had no idea she was doing that uh, so I, I saw that scene i woke up uh i you know i went back to my physical body and then in my in the physical i went to that place and saw the exact same scene at at that i already knew uh I already had this sort of direct knowledge, this faith that, okay, I, I know this is real. I've had all these experiences, but really having that in that moment was a real, like, wow, this it really solidified and grounded. Like this is real, you know? Yeah. I, I really, yeah. Yeah. So maybe yeah. you could, well, well, actually everybody can find a lot about astral projection through you as this was yeah. the thing that, that started, but, um, yeah, maybe I'll go back to this awakening of consciousness now that we have like some definitions down. And, you know, I guess the question I really want to ask is from your point of view, what spirituality is. And before I even ask that, I want to like say to whoever is listening that this is a, a topic of conversation that I think in order for society to really progress as a society and evolve, we need to have like really round tabled discussions about this because it's getting more and more freaky out there. <laughs> so this might be one of many podcasts. Let's see. But yeah, I would love to hear what spirituality is to you. Yeah. Um, and similar with, similar to the my answer about you know my life story we get caught up in an image uh and in the same way uh, with the word spirituality as soon as we hear that there's already an encoded system of feelings and, and preconceptions behind that and so i mean that's how kind of <laughs> terrible our minds are we just destroy every good word that you originally had some you know good meaning behind it like god the word god i used to just i didn't like that word for a long time but through through my own experiences it's become something a word that i really love but in teaching it and saying that word it's it's difficult so in the same way spirit the word spirituality mm -hmm. is is difficult is a difficult word to work with now these days especially with uh new age and as you said we, we're becoming even more uh, crazy. <laughs> so it's, it's important to not get caught up with words. Uh, I, I think 
from with our conversation, it's better to use the word uh, truth or yeah. reality. Reality, and, and yes, that was right. what I was going to say. With a right with a capital R, yeah, as well. absolutely, <laughs> and truth with a capital T too. It's just reality, and that's what that's what we want to see because especially with the word spirituality, we can certainly have so many spiritual ideas that we don't see reality. <laughs> right. And then <laughs> you know, it compartmentalizes. It's like, that's uh, scientific over there and that's spiritual over there. And that's um, right. really musical over there. And it's like, but really right. we're getting more and more into objectivity. Right. Hopefully. Yeah. So truth and reality, real truth it's universal and it applies to everything science religion you know every part of your life even the most mundane uh, aspects of a person's life so yeah uh so that's that's the main point of real spirituality i would say is that first we do not see you know what reality is uh, right. and we don't perceive it at all and we don't we don't even live in reality as we said before we're like lazing around in our robot mind and letting the the machine uh the human machine do its life uh, but we're actually not even living it we're not controlling our body we're not we're not uh co in control of many unconscious impulses and we're subject to so many forces that we don't even you know really understand so we just we live in an image of this uh of this reality uh, and and spirit spirituality is really yeah to discover what is actually real, and uh, if we yeah. really saw reality from the great heights of consciousness, from the great perspectives of of this place, this sense, this source, or whatever we want to call it, God or whatever, most of us would not like what we saw and. So we prefer to stay in the image because we're attached to the image of our reality or I, our ideas, whether religious, spiritual, political, or, or whatever. So, right. Yeah. 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 And I think that's a hard thing for people to grasp that. And this like goes back to this whole, like how awake you are. Like, you know, when someone throws this in your face, and if this is the first time you're hearing this, if you've listened to my podcast enough, it's probably not the first time you've heard this, but um, yeah, like the, we're just so subject to like, how often are you in the moment? <laughs> never, <laughs> almost never. Right. Like mm -hmm. I'm always like, oh, I need to call this person and I need to do this thing. And it's, it's almost like, I think it has a lot to do with our relationship to time and how we experience time as well. Um, everything is always subject to past or future, which is a very one dimensional way to exist, right? It's, it's literally one dimensional. Um, yeah. So, and everything's colored by our ego, by our thoughts, by our past, by our, our wishes, by our regrets, by everything that, it's so rare to just see anything or be in the present or see anything as it is. And this, I, yeah, I just want to, this was just really, this is something I'm still learning and understanding and was really brought to my awareness about two years ago, not just in theory or be in the moment you're right on it, but like the importance of it. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, that's what spirituality is. And I think we could both agree because I also was like, I think it's the study of cosmic law and reality. It's a study of objectivity. So now we can go into what it's not <laughs> in your perspective. <laughs> we kind of covered it, you know, with the, that spirituality is not <laughs> what we think it is or what we, uh, what reality or well, what we think reality uh is and we always stay in the image and it's always it's always to do with our detachments and always to do with our feelings and subjective egoic feelings about what we think you know spirituality is so you know similar to to what you said it's it's, it's all about staying in this moment and seeing uh seeing reality because if you're far disconnected from uh, our your physical reality then you don't really uh intuit you know what is what is actual you know what is real 
because you're too uh, concerned with lazing around in the head and not actually seeing, uh, you know, this actual reality. So, right. yeah. Because I think mm. up until two years ago, up until I was introduced to this new level of, let's say, reality, mm. I would have, I think if I were to ask this question, I'd love to hear what, you, like, maybe if you were asked this question like five years ago or 10 years ago, because for me, it, it would have been how many cities are on, how many, um, how tapped in you are to your extra sensory perceptions. Because to me, that was like the more psychic you were, the more spiritual in a way you were. But also, I also saw it as like a sense of groundedness and connected to nature as well, which I think is true. But mm -hmm. what I'm understanding now is that it doesn't really like, you could be like channeling so, so-called sixth dimensional, whatever, galactic, whatever. And that's not that, well, I guess you could say it's, it's dealing with other dimensions for sure, but it's not, it has nothing to do with awakening and reality necessarily. It could. Um, yeah, I think a, a person can have psychic abilities and not be enlightened, you know? So, right. yeah, so we can be, we can be awakened to, to certain things, but not understand them as well. So. Right. So there's yeah, this level of comprehension yeah. that comes in. It's like seeing things as they are and also being able to comprehend them. Yeah. I think if someone's really able to be in the present moment, the divine present moment of this, of now, whether they're washing the dishes or having this conversation like we're having, then that is the most, that's kind of the pinnacle to me now, which I wouldn't have been able to say a few years ago. Cause I too yeah. was a bit lost in the new age in some ways, not really like lost in right. it, but like, um, enamored by right. it it or enamored mm. by some aspects of it a lot of aspects i always was like that's yeah so yeah, yeah, yeah. The, so e then... the ego always mm, the ego always tries to you know imagine that it's some kind of huge uh sensationalist thing and that we're going to be like a god and that we're going to be really you know like powerful <sighs> and and really like cool and and have all these powers and stuff i mean Sure, maybe, but you know, awakening is really, it's a lot more simple and it's a lot more uh, balanced and it's a lot more subtle, you know, it's not out here in the physical world. It's something totally internal uh, that other right. people can't really see, but it's really profound to you as an individual. Right. Yeah. So it's like the having certain psychic gifts or abilities is just it, it's not symptomatic of enlightening. It's not exclusive to being enlightened. But of course, I'm sure if people do become enlightened and more awake, certain things will turn on. But it doesn't mean just because those are abilities are on that you are awake and enlightened. It's, yeah. Um, right, yeah. So, so then let's, yeah, let's talk a little bit about the pitfalls of maybe like the traps. You just mentioned the spiritual ego and... Well, you didn't use that word. I'm using that word, but you did mention it. So maybe yeah. the the pitfalls that you see at least today in like the modern modern day around this. <laughs> you're right. These words, this concept of spirituality, <laughs> which is already problematic. But yeah, this world that's growing for sure, which is not a bad thing. So right now there is this immense opportunity for people to really see the truth and to really wake up and to really. Uh, awaken and see reality because of this huge uh, chaotic energy and because of this absurdity, this growing absurdity uh, of this circus of, of the material life and in every kind of dimension, you know, whether you see the media, uh, new age spirituality, if you look at religion, I mean, everyone's, you know, becoming more crazy. Right. So for only for those really for who start to have that that divine kind of spark or this uh this bhakti this this spiritual uh fire and desire to to know what really is reality it does become more of an intense i would say it becomes more of an intense uh feeling and an intuition about what really is true uh, and i think you know on that one end there's a big opportunity for everyone and then on the other end and mm -hmm. i think this is contrary to a lot of new age beliefs uh, right. that you know things will get worse 
on this planet, I think. Um, and I'm not, you know, prophesizing. I think it's just uh, pure logic from a psychological perspective, you know, that the more people awaken, uh, the more resistance there will be. Because, you know, really we are at a time where we are being called to awaken. We are being called to balance out everything. Um, but there seems to be a polarity on two ends. And I think before things get better, you know, there will be more war, more conflict, more conflict, more duality, because it's, it's really like the universe is uh, throwing duality in our face and, and showing us, look, this is duality. Uh, so, you know, what do you, what are you going to do? Are you going to comprehend it? Are you going to be conscious or are you going to be unconscious? Um, right. Are you going to, you know, start living on this side or that side of, of the, this spectrum? So, yeah, definitely interesting times, I think, uh, to come. Yeah. Yeah. And you um, mentioned this and I, I think this is so important. You you just mentioned this and I just want to like hammer it in, which is what you were saying is contrary to like a lot of new age beliefs and like obviously you and I and probably a lot of people we know we would would criticize the new age as a whole even though there's many gems within it but for the most part yeah. I'm like that is a rodeo <laughs> like a messy rodeo but um of like non yeah. no there's no science there's no structure it's just a it's just a giant buffet and of course you could find some things in there but um yeah, a lot of I think there's there's this thing, especially now, because you're out there public and there's like lots of people public and sharing things. And it's really hard to discern um, what's actually helpful from what's super detrimental. And I think it's either going to be helpful or detrimental to that person. And of course, some things that are helpful to some people, you know, but um, th there is something, there is this line and I've really heard it really strong the last two years, especially since all this covid i was gonna say nonsense but whatever this covid <laughs> yeah. chaos um which is like we're all ascending this is just us going into 5d this is like just sit back and relax and i actually i find that to be whether people are conscious of it or not i find that to be really demonic forces behind that that um mm. illusion which i think there is truth to it i think some there is a force that is going upward for sure. And some yeah. people are catching wind of it a little bit. That doesn't mean they're there, but that is, that's super effort. And I think they like to tell people, yeah. oh, you already know all about the conspiracies, which by the way, are mostly true. A lot of them, I don't know all of them, but you know, you already know the government is in on this and this vaccine is bad. And so you just sit back, you just sit back, you know, say no to all those things for sure go protest in the street if you will which is also okay thing to do and i totally respect yeah. it but you sit back and relax because you're just ascending but but you're not that, ascending that's not the remedy effort. no right. that's, that's not the remedy that the ego needs because the ego really uh you know it always wants comfort and it always wants security and anything to just you know self soothe itself to feel that it's uh you know, relaxing, comfortable, everything's okay, nothing to worry about, then we're all okay. But it's not, that's not really the truth. Yes, we do need to be in our being in this present moment and all of that. But it's not, um, that's not the best way to go about it, you know, <laughs> just go on holiday and sit on a beach and do nothing. I mean, right. Yeah. Like, oh, and just kind of feeding people like, don't worry, you're already there. I think this is so what I'm saying mm. is, <laughs> watch right. out, people. Um, because <laughs> yeah. also, the new age, like you said, is a beautiful place to wake up because there's so much nonsense. Yeah. And right. and I think, actually, a lot of people will come to spirituality out of comfort in the beginning, but that could be their process to then seeing how nonsensical all of it is and then finding the truth, too. So... I guess eat, everybody has their own path. And I think, you know, I don't know, they say this in some Gnostic teachings before the Christ comes the Antichrist or before, before the truth comes the lie. Right. So yeah, everything is revealed first. Yeah, exactly. Before. Like everything that's right. not it comes first and then right. it comes. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. So how is it that you see your role? Because obviously this changed for you, I don't know, a year ago where you've been, Yeah, you know, a year ago. developing for 10 years or probably your whole life and many lifetimes, but for all intents and purposes, 10 years of this inner development and then suddenly coming out to the public. So what's that been like for you, especially coming out to this this world where YouTube is full of people channeling and all this stuff. How do you see your role there and your responsibility? Yeah. Um, mm. It's a, it can be tricky. And I think if a person's, person's not ready for that, it's definitely easy to get more lost in all of that. It's definitely good to just, you know, sit your bum down for a while, some good years and just listen and listen and listen. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, if you try to go out there and teach too quickly, uh, you know, if you're, if you're too doubtful of yourself or, or too, you know, scared of criticism, et cetera, then it's, yeah. As I said before, I did this because I just enjoyed it. And I saw people uh, not in, uh, not understanding particular things, especially uh, astral projection. And I just wanted to help, you know? So I think it's important for everyone to just enjoy, you know, whatever people put out in the world. Um, but it's also definitely a mistake to kind of worship uh, teachers and gurus. And I think uh, some some parts of New Age also get this mistake, you know, and, and or don't emphasize enough that we are meant to really get in touch with our own our own being, and we are really all meant to follow our own self, not in an egoic way. I mean, self with you know capital S, because the the guidance is there, all the information and the wisdom and your particular path, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and. You know, me, myself, I'm just on this surface level of reality. I mean, I'm just, I'm just a stupid fool. I'm nobody, you know, <laughs> um, it's the, it's the consciousness. It's this being within myself that I've been trying to grab for so many years that it is giving me this, um, or has allowed like certain things to be shared. And, uh, that's, you know, that's the power that's the, I think people will always make mistakes to worship the teacher instead of acknowledging that this is just knowledge that comes from consciousness and praise always should be given to that, to this divinity, you know, which is within all of us rather than, um, you know, trying to see people as separate. So yeah, if people make that mistake, uh, because yeah, this is something, you know, I've, I've been, you know, meditating on as well, that uh, if people make the mistake, of that, of, of worshiping a guru or a teacher mm. or whatever. I mean, that's not my responsibility. That's their fault <laughs> for seeing that. And I can right. say it as, as many times as I want. People will always make mistakes regardless of what you say. So, And also yeah. sometimes that's the person's path because I think we – It, it is mm, right. really programmed in us. It's really age of Pisces, even more so age of Aries. If people don't understand what I'm saying, I'm going back to like biblical times where the way the mm. cosmic rays were hitting the earth at the time, and you can study this, is that um, you would be initiated by a priest and in their energy. And that's where this like the teacher, like there was a time for not a worship of the teacher, but that the teacher holds the knowledge and they imbue it on you. And that was something that existed in a very specific time period. But we have to be honest because we're always evolving of where we are. Right. And that's completely out of time. And it becomes lower astral. It becomes demonic, if you will, to then start worshiping teachers or gurus but it's a very old program in us because it, it served a purpose at a time but that I also think it can be a really important lesson for people along the way and I think I don't know if you've had that before Jean but I definitely had something where I put too much um not yeah we did talk about this once where I had too much emphasis on a spiritual teacher where I really I was I was unconsciously feeding them my energy because I thought that they knew it all until I realized that I don't even know how I realized it. It was just like, oh my God, this person's a fraud or, and I learned a lot, not a fraud, but you know, and, and I, I didn't wallow in the, the betrayal and the upset. Your, yeah. Right. The main thing was your projection, right? That's the exactly. And you learn and then, yeah. and then you grow because you say, oh, wow. 
I really gave my energy away to this person and to this spiritual teaching. It could be to the church. It could literally be that you're giving your energy towards Christianity or Islam or Judaism or Hinduism, and you're giving it to the church. You're giving it rather than receiving internally. But yeah, what? Mm -hmm. how would you define a teacher then? And I know you're not well, defining yeah. yourself as that, but I would mm -hmm. love, like, at least for this time. Yeah. And I, I think definitely during this time now, uh, it is the age of following your inner guidance and following your inner master. That is something that comes with time, but it's it's really, that is the time. It's mm -hmm. the time for that, you know, for people to really look within and follow that impulse uh, in the heart. And um, it may be that uh, certain people uh, attracted into your life, certain even teachers or or you know, I can, you know, I, I can say in my life for sure that I've met certain people who weren't necessarily teachers, uh, but they had something there to show me certain things, whether consciously or, or unconsciously. We're all right. like puzzle pieces and we come together and uh, it all kind of benefit each other, um, especially if we start taking this path. We, it's very common for people to lose certain friends uh, that they never kind of benefited from before but then other people come in as well so yeah I think you know people make that assumption about teachers as well about um you know the responsibility that that teachers have that they think you know oh you may be leading them astray uh with the information that you've given them but um I wouldn't say you know that's that's correct uh this is why Jesus said those who have ears to hear, let them hear, right? It's easy to argue as well that Jesus led millions of people on the wrong path too. But, uh, you know, and look at churches today. You know, is it his fault that churches are like that today? No, it's ours, right? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think people, mm, people yeah. judge and, and scrutinize uh, teachers too much without without judging and scrutinizing, you know, themselves first. Right. Uh, it's an illusion. It's an illusion that a teacher is in the hot seat. He's not, you know, the, the student, the listener is in the hot seat. Right. So whatever a teacher, whatever a teacher says can be, you know, interpreted by just anyone. Um, and those who, who know how to listen will really, really hear what that uh, person is actually saying. And everyone, as we saw, we're mostly subjectivity everyone will hear different things according to their path and mm -hmm. we all have a a set com complexity or structure in our thought forms and if we're not sincerely looking for the light for the enlightenment of ourselves then anything we hear from other people is just going to be darkness and nonsense and just more blabber but if we are sincerely looking for the light it's like there's just a little force where we, we we just move all of that darkness and subjectivity and we can just hear that little bit of light. And if we just grab onto that and then take value in what that teacher is saying, then we can really awaken, you know? Right. Because so, I've I've made I've made loads of videos like it easily. Someone can totally start awakening them, their consciousness more than me. <laughs> if they really hear and they start to listen uh, and awaken in their heart and, and maybe one day I'll learn from them. But so it's really this listening, right? That people just don't know how to really listen. Yeah. Right. And I think it's yeah. this higher force. It really depends on what their being, what their inner Buddha, what the highest octave of themselves, who's always working through right. us, really wants. And I think it depends on how strong that force is for each people, each person. And um I know this is like not something that people like to say in the new age because it's a place where people seek comfort, but like you and I can be real where not everyone is going to evolve and not everyone is going to, um, hell, I don't even know if I am. I, I hope so. I feel like I'm on that path, but I, I don't know for sure. It depends on how much, you know, it, 
I don't know from the, I have a feeling that's my direction at least but like at, yeah at least for now in this life we can I think everyone can agree that the majority of people are going to go to their grave miserable and unhappy and not really understand and have any self-knowledge right. <laughs> at least for this life you know but I think the yeah. reality doesn't really hit people because oh I'll just reincarnate and do this stuff but eventually you will devolve mm. down into animal form back into mineral and come back up again to you know over millions of years to reach this point like this is, I think this is what I never understood until recently is that it is a privilege to be in human form right now. And you will right. not be reincarnating forever. I'm still learning this to, to be true knowledge. It feels really true. It makes sense to me. It scares the shit out of me. But so I can't say I know directly, like, but it makes sense basically we're um, given right we're given this life from nature and, and you and will go back really, yeah right and as a general rule if you don't if you're not appreciative and grateful of this life if you don't enjoy this life you won't you you generally won't be able to enjoy or discover the higher realms of life you know this is physical reality and then you have the astral mental causal like if this right. the physical has to be aligned and so that's another thing about uh new age spirituality it usually is, it's like it's kind of rebellious like oh you know let's ignore all of the physical world like that it's not about ignoring the physical world it's about totally uh, integrating and becoming balanced and uh having this union with the physical and not ignoring any aspects of it at all yeah right right and really yeah. taking this opportunity because it it's you're not going to be human in human body forever there is a limit i think and whatever it's according to cosmic law i can't tell you what that is and i don't know where you're at in that but like we really some will devolve it's like leaves on a tree you know that's what my friend told me once yeah. like it's not a bad thing it's just a fact of life like we don't have to see it as good or bad but i think right. you know going back to this like teacher thing is like the the person listening and it depends on you, you know how much force in them wants to evolve because they will they will be led like things will be in their path right and i think nothing is you know for certain but um but we can always change our paths as well. Um, right. And that, that's what I was talking about, the um, this this time that we're in and things becoming more crazy. It really creates more of the sense of the sense of uh, urgency of, OK, I really need to figure this out. And you know, totally. that's why people are more and more having this, you know, these awakenings or this desire to to know. Right. Right. Know and that's like. Capital Okay. <laughs> exactly. No, yeah. no, sis. Direct experience. Really understand reality. Really comprehend it. Um, yeah. But I think that's what, you know, coal is made into a diamond under pressure. And also, I know mm -hmm. people, I have many good friends who have been addicts in recovery and they're, you know, in different 12 step programs. There's a lot of beauty to those programs too that I've learned a lot through them. But they would always say, in order for an addict to get better, they have to hit rock bottom and everybody's rock bottom is different. And I think humanity, yeah. now every person is different. Humanity is being smashed onto the ground right now. <laughs> like, you know, like yeah. it couldn't, but some people don't feel that pressure until later. For me, right. it's like, I guess you could say I felt it my whole life, probably you as well, but the, especially the last right. two years, it's been ago. like momentum. And I think that's, me feeling that pressure in the last two years is direct uh, reflection of the pressure in the last two years that humanity's under the the kind of um, velocity of it, I guess you could say. But yeah, going back to this teacher thing, I really like this idea. You, this idea that the, a teacher is not a master. First of all, there's a difference, and I think we're living in an age with a lot of teachers and also a lot of false teachers. <laughs> But I think in this day and age, and I'd love to hear what you think, that a teacher is someone you should eventually outgrow. And maybe you can be friends with them too, but nobody, you shouldn't ever keep that dynamic forever. I mean, maybe in some cases it really is like that, but I think we're here to show and we're all able to teach something. We all know something. Like I would argue, I know you would never say that you're a teacher, but I would argue you teach quite a lot of things. Um, mm -hmm. but also my favorite teachers that I know of, and I would definitely put you in this category as well, that 
they are also open to making mistakes and having discussions about it. Like you're not going to find a perfect teacher here. And I think that's really beautiful to have that, that honesty. Yeah. 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 I don't think, um, I mean, for teachers who do kind of believe themselves or act really in this role as a teacher is really not a true teacher, you know, because a true teacher still is learning from everyone and also from themselves. And this path is completely infinite. If you think you've made it, I mean, <laughs> most uh, likely you've not, <laughs> right, you've not made it. So, and, you know, I'm, I'm not all like perfect or I'm not like all popular as well. Like, you know, I had many many messages of, of lots of hate and lots of uh, mm. beliefs and dogma and things like that sent to me, you know, people will always be like damaged by what you say. And um, it's not really the, the teacher that uh, who hurts them. It's the, there was already hurt in that yeah, person, exactly. you know, you really just, the teacher the just brings it out. Hurt. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. So um, I think teachers and student relationships are quite, natural as long as the teacher doesn't isn't always like acting like a teacher the teacher will be able to see that or recognize if the per if the if the student is really growing they'll see and recognize that that person is kind of become you know like an equal or some parts of their being is really even more developed you know so yeah as i said before we're all teachers and and we're all students um right yeah. And, and, I, and it's, yeah. it's really, it's really important for all teachers also to just be, I mean, I, this is something I always remind myself just to be completely detached from this whole process and teaching and just sharing is the way for you to really, the person to really like me, myself, accelerate my own process too. Um, and because it becomes a little more intense as well, uh, especially when you're working with all of the egos and the questions and everything, you know, a real awakened person does not live out here, you know, in the mm -hmm. physical world. They live internally. Um, in, you know, in the Gnostic teachings, it's kind of said more of literal, like they live in the internal worlds, meaning they're just totally detached from external reality. And it's more, it just external reality and physical reality becomes more of a play it's not as it's not as important as we think it is before we were awakened you know yeah but, um it, it's it, what is internal is more important <laughs> because after all this humanity this world we live in has been manifested from our internal or our collective internal and everything comes out of out of that but we just don't see this internal reality and therefore we can't change it and it's not a matter of just thinking about it or even having like elaborate discussions it's just more about very simple awareness the more we're more aware we are the more we see reality the more natural it is for just consciousness to grow for uh, humanity to transform or individuals to transform in a positive way uh, and um, yeah it, it will be all, all we need is just awareness, simple awareness and just yeah. acceptance, no judgment. And uh, it's very natural, really. We can speak so elaborately and have these great Gnostic ideas and everything, but it really is in a practice and in, in a person's individual experience. It is a, it is a beautiful process and it's not, uh, you know, all, it's not all pain and suffering and, oh, this life is, you know, really horrible, you know, you know, yeah. yeah. I think if we're not laughing too, like, I mean, the world can literally right. be like, I think honestly a comet could be coming. I'm not saying to like, <laughs> just write a meme about it and not pay attention. But I think you have to be able to find humor in, all the time. Like that is, yeah. I think that is a trait of enlightenment. What do you think? Like, that is yeah, becoming absolutely. like the child. Yeah. Like, so, honestly, sometimes people will message me um, and they're so serious and they say and sometimes I might like put like a, a laughing emoji because I just find what they're saying <laughs> so hilarious but then they say why do you laugh that's not good that's not a that's not what a spiritual teacher should do like you should be serious I'm like, okay I just act very serious and just try to help this person but really you know it is it is all of this kind of uh cosmic play this this yeah yeah we need to laugh <laughs> yeah yes we do um I this is like I'm this is just speculation but I'm really curious to hear what you think where do you think 
spirit like what will the word world look like in terms of all this that we're talking about in like the next generation or so where do you see spirituality headed the good the bad and the ugly like all aspects of it i'm just curious i think there will be a very a good number uh, more than maybe there ever has of real genuine like underground people who really live from the heart and they really know the truth and they're just so sincere and so honest and they're to in total acceptance of all the ugliness of humanity but are very happy people as well um and i don't know what percentage of people that will be but <laughs> i would like it to be like 20 percent at least <laughs> but definitely below that number um and then i think the majority of people are still going to be in this uncertainty and more anxiety and more be like feeling like a like a just like a maniac you know not going around in life not really understanding i think it's becoming harder to be a normal person and live a normal life <laughs> i think that those that feeling of this the sense of urgency to know oneself is becoming is becoming like a it's like the divine mother and father is just kind of nudging everyone like look the deadline is coming the homework yeah. we all need to start to awaken yeah. and then so those are the sincere kind of people who don't really know and they're just in the middle um yeah and it's 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 difficult but then i think there's going to be this real a kind of a maybe a scary amount a big <laughs> group of people who are going to really become like radical extremists with very powerful ideas and ideologies and uh probably very spiritual ones too and uh, i know you're interested in like transhumanism too and th not well, you advocate, not I know I'm you, not an advocate. Yeah. <laughs> Interested yeah, yeah. in the topic but, um, in a freaked out way. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think there will be a lot of that as well. Yeah. And, you know, like Elon Musk, right, going to Mars yeah. and, and all of this. And, and it's really this sense of having faith in modern science and that humanity is going it, it human humanity and these these strangers that we don't even know have all the answers to all of our problems of evolution and that we're we are still evolving and we should have faith in humanity and technology and it's just putting faith in this again in this external reality this illusion right. and losing ourselves and identifying with life instead of finding like peace and, and comfort and, and self-knowledge and the union of our our self and our our inner being. Right. Yeah. And I think this this small I, I definitely feel similarly. It's all speculation. Like we yeah. don't no right. one actually knows. But um yeah. but certain patterns are obvious. And I I really feel, yeah, that I think spirituality in terms of serving the ego and trying to astro like a lot of black magic but i don't mean in this old way i mean like merging with machine and to yeah you know i think will be really popular right. this sort of open-ended unstructured spirituality oh it's just channel these entities i think that will almost be the majority of the world and then mm -hmm. i think this underground kind of energy like just but powerful of people really developing their what I'm saying is these two groups, I really feel like they're going to mirror each other. So like while, while people are developing inwardly and maybe they're developing certain empathic or telepathy, like that's just turning on naturally as they develop themselves. Then there will also have people merging with machine where they're like text messaging message. Like it will be the aromonic Lucifer, kind of the more demonic they'll, they'll mirror each other in a way but one will be artificially mm. externally developing which is really just mm. devolution we're already seeing the beginning of it i mean there's nothing wrong with the internet and all this stuff but it's everything's gonna you know all these technology yeah. being used for like the ego it's like magic or then right. using it for good like hopefully like we're doing now i think um yeah, yeah yeah so that's why um i kind of said before about this everything becoming more intense uh this inner conflict or, or this outer conflict this war uh of of things kind of people choosing their side you know you're going to be conscious or unconscious and what are you going to give your you know what are you going to give your uh kind of faith to and uh it's also this is also a reflection of what's what's it's the inner process of our 
of our awakening as well. Within each one of us, we do have this war of this kind of conscience of, you know, this good and this de uh, the demon and the angel on our on our sides, and um, and there's this sort of uh, army within us of 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 you know the battle between uh, consciousness and unconsciousness, and and whether you know wh which side are we gonna are we going to take? Uh, somewhere in the Bible, you know, about it says about you know either be cold or be hot but don't be lukewarm you know yeah. don't be don't be fickle like choose your side you know so this right. is what i really love about uh the gnostic teachings as well is that it doesn't just tell you like you said about uh about new age beliefs and, and things about okay just sit back and relax uh it's really more about empowering uh the good in us and also you know feeling the willpower to do that and the force and feeling more like we have a sword in our hand rather than just thinking we're you know sitting back and all we have to do is smoke weed all day and, and do nothing <laughs> you know right. it's a real force and a willpower yeah yeah well you just brought up weed <laughs> i was also <laughs> thinking of these these powerful medicines as well i just since we're having this discussion i mean i think this is something that's really coming up Nowadays, there's many ayahuasca ceremonies. Oh, by the way, I just, for like, so people understand, I'm not like black and white about this issue at all. I have done, I've been to ayahuasca ceremonies that have really helped me. I've done mushrooms where I've, they've really, like most times that I've done quote unquote drugs or medicines, however you want to see it, it's both really. Um, they've really helped me. But I do see the danger and I'm watching a lot of devolutionary processes take place. I can't say for each person, just that string of energy around this. And I think it's getting more and more popular. And I think there's a lot of potential for good too there, but I don't know, maybe you'd like to speak a little bit on these master plants or. Yeah. I mean, um, I've, uh, when I was in university, uh, like 10 years ago as well, you know, I, I took things um, and it was, it was, yeah, fine. <laughs> I mean, most of the time it's really just, you know, recreational, right. And just kind of having fun. Um, you can use them for, you know, trying to gain another perspective in life. Uh, but the ego is the problem and it becomes right. clingy and it becomes, it feels like it needs this thing in order to, in order to see something. And honestly, like if I took, if I started smoking weed now, I would feel lower in my consciousness. I mm -hmm. wouldn't feel higher, you mm -hmm. know? Um, so it's definitely people have to use those things or if you, people already are uh, just very consciously um, and, and just be aware of the danger of just being attached to that because it, all it's doing is just activating something within you that is was kind of already there, whether it's ego, whether it's uh, consciousness. I mean, it's just making you see something but i think it, it takes a toll on both the body and the consciousness if uh we abuse those things and it it's just not good for for balancing if you really want to kind of take this path it it, it brings you out of balance you know there's this the come down right and you just uh yeah it's not um it's not right. good long term mm. and they're called medicines and you don't can like if you have a cold and you take cough medicine let's just say just to get over it or whatever not that I'm advocating that. I think there's better ways to get over your cough. But let's just say you don't keep doing that all the time. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, I think like medicines are like medicines. And I, I, one of the biggest dangers is that because it can be so powerful and so helpful at the same time is exactly what you said is this attachment to it. Because it's a um, mutual friend. She's told me um, that it's sort of like – it takes you into like the spiritual realms with a blindfold on and leads you by the hand. And then you take the blindfold off and it's amazing. And you, you might get all these insights or it might be a bit scary. And then you come back to reality, but it doesn't teach you how to get there. And you can just keep relying yeah. on it and it will definitely degrade your will. Because if you keep relying on something to take you somewhere, it's like if I didn't want to use my legs and I wanted to just like, this is a really bad example, but like I don't know, use roller skates or something. I don't know. Or like be in a wheelchair or something, but never get out of the wheelchair and start walking or like never, never crawl to like walking. You will just lose your, 
I don't know. You'll lose the power behind it. And I'm sure you can get it back. Right. But I, I definitely see that it's like it's people's connection to spirituality. And I find that really dangerous because mm. you, it's in you. All of yeah. this. Yeah. It's, right. Yeah. The the uh, symbolism I've used uh, a lot is, is using those drugs as that crutch for that. Um, it's like getting into a spaceship and the spaceship will fly you out into space and you're in the back seat and you have no idea where it's going. And eventually it just crashes on a planet somewhere and you've, you're just in a daze, <laughs> right? Drunk. Right. Uh, but it, but real spirituality, real, really finding that path, developing your own world is about building your own spaceship, driving right. it, you know, going to the destination, landing safely. And uh, yeah. And also knowing Using how the spaceship anything. works and being able, because I yeah. think if you haven't actually developed your astral body, you haven't developed your energy bodies, you can be led into these spiritual energies and get a lot of lower astral stuff and think it's the truth. Oh my gosh, this plant medicine mother told me that I'm meant to be singing in the streets and this could help people and all this stuff. And it's just feeding some desire. It's not actually the truth. And I think we also have to realize that like a lot of the visions and stuff we have when we haven't actually developed ourselves inwardly and haven't actually awakened consciousness are not necessarily objectively true. They could be sometimes right. and be helpful. But yeah, I think it's important to share with people because I think it's good to try things and explore things when you're being says it. Yeah. So it's not a black and white issue, but it's something right. I'm really seeing the dangers of happening as well. Yeah. Um, kind of a big topic, <laughs> but <laughs> one that you've brought up on your channel, one that I think is really important. And yeah, we don't have to go into such detail, but maybe is how um, sexuality connects to spirituality. Because I think, actually, you know, for many years, this is what was, I was looking for someone to make this connect. I knew it was connected, but like nobody really mm. could. It wasn't until two years ago that I was really shown this connection. So, yeah, yeah, I would love to hear yeah, what you have to say on that. Yeah, a lot of uh, I made like a big video on that recently. And so many comments were like, wow, this really makes sense. You know, that's kind of what. I was intuiting and yeah, it's really great that people uh, see that, but yeah, spirituality and sexuality, <laughs> it's an illusion, of course, that uh, it's separate, you know, and um, again, with this kind of pseudo spiritual approach, we always try to separate it from religion, separate it from science, from society, in the same way people like to separate it from uh sexuality and having like deep critical thought about and and practice about you know what really is sexuality and how does it really play a role in my life and uh how can i use it in order to integrate this domain this huge domain and aspect of my life instead of just doing all the things that humanity does with sexuality right so we've we first have to recognize that we've made it's this separate thing, this like hidden toy in the box that nobody speaks about. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's either very repressed or it's a very, uh, what's the opposite of repressed, like express, you know, yeah. very expressive, and very out there. And there's no, there's no balance. And really these, uh, the teaching of the, you know, alchemy, uh, white tantra, or just sexual transmutation is that narrow way it's that middle way of fixing and uh cleaning up all of this uh this energy within us and yeah it's something very it takes a while to really understand it takes practice but as long as you recognize the the truth of it and and the real goodness and the real virtue and the real benefits that can come out of it uh you'll just you'll keep progressing with it and you'll really start to really start to gain uh it's like having a big boost uh, like a, a a nuclear energetic boost in in your in your own process if you clean up that part right because we have as we were talking at the start of this conversation we have the human machine, we have the, the intellect, we have the emotions, we have the physical body, the motor instinctive. Uh, and then we also have this sexual energy, which is obviously the most powerful one, 
you know people mm -hmm. the urge and the impulse to procreate to uh get a partner is really really uh, strong and so mo i think most of spirituality and most of really like science anything people don't believe or they don't feel that this is something that they can get a grip of and usually in kind of older schools or gnostic schools or cult schools or whatever uh this was or like even buddhism this was something that was taught after someone had advanced to a good um, a good level you know right um yeah meditation the, the either the teacher or whatever saw or felt that they had really committed themselves enough they meditated enough and um and they uh, felt that they were ready for this information these days as we've been talking about humanity is in a, in a sort of critical state and so that's why this information has been allowed to come out now and show people and anyone again anyone who has the, the ears to hear and the eyes to see can follow it and practice it and uh, yeah yeah and i think also realizing i mean i come from this astrology background and this is not like <laughs> Instagram astrology, which is also funny as well with the memes. But I mean, like actually this cosmic kind of Rudolf Steiner, Theosophical Society, you know, really setting up uh, understanding time through the cosmic rays, basically. And the age of Pisces, which we're coming out of, is all about obscuration and um, things being hidden and illusion. And that was the state that we were in still are in yeah. some in a way um and so these kinds of teachings the sexual teachings were actually out in the open but only for people with eyes to see like you could argue the whole book of genesis is just about sexual energy if you can actually read it and have the kabbalah yeah. inside have the reception yeah. to have to be able to read that, it so it was there but it was it was piss hidden. some people off <laughs> oh yeah but they got to be ready for it also you don't have to right. agree with me it's fine but like if you have eyes to see yeah. you'll see it sorry yeah. sorry not sorry <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah. also it was also the state of consciousness it was not it would be it was almost dangerous in a way because it was so under attack, sexual energy, and it, it still is. I mean, mm. you can see it regressing into more and more external kind of transhumanist forms with porn and weird, like, images, like people just completely out of their body and simulated sex and weird stuff. But, um, but definitely, right. I think people are going to, just like you said, that like devolving and evolving sort of two groups, definitely some people will come back to these teachings. But it's it's really beautiful, yeah. I think, now that we're in the age of Aquarius, which is where everything's out in the open and communicated and <laughs> take it or leave it. Like, it's definitely going to yeah. make people, like, not everyone's going to take it and that's fine. But um, yeah. uh, what I'm noticing, like, recently of, like, you know, learning about all this, I'm really just a student of it and and um, investigating it and uh making my own science experiment, like, you know, learning from recording your own results, really. Because yeah. I actually find the more that it's talked about and you do such an amazing job on your channel and I'm just, everybody will know from my intro that your stuff is linked in my show notes, but I will, I'm just reminding people now again to check it out, please. Uh, that people actually really are interested and it might just be the kind of people I'm around but I think people are like wow it's I've something has felt wrong my whole life and like what is <laughs> yeah, that yeah. what is that and that actually mm -hmm. every every mystical tradition every mystery tradition from Egypt to the Mayans to Atlantis to early Judeo-Christian mysticism is all about sexual energy yeah, it's the electricity that builds the bodies. And I think right. if we, it's been so hard to talk about, and it's just now that people know that if you've been looking for spirituality and all, like, if you start to refine this energy in you, I think everything will, you'll find your way, I think, hopefully. Yeah, absolutely. It's a really, it's a very powerful um, part of our primal self and uh in a way really the the sexual energy has the blueprint of uh how our whole physical body functions you know sexual energy is kind of this uh battery in at the bottom of uh, our our body and it 
it gives a rise to the different electrical impulses as to how we how we you know act and feel and react in the world and uh, whether that's in a negative way or a positive way so to really work with that energy is to really work with the deepest part of ourself you know like if you if you're trying to build a house if you build it on like you know sand and it the you know the sand is just very uh flimsy and it, the, the house is going to fall you know you, you you keep trying to meditate you keep trying to uh uh learn astral projection uh, but you're building your hat you're you're focusing on the top part right but if you focus on the deeper parts and you start to work then mm -hmm. you can really start to build this foundation uh, mm -hmm. foundation the sexual energy also being uh known as foundation in kabbalah as well right so yeah yeah it's really our currency of is it, i guess you could say it's like our spiritual currency of our energy of our soul spirit really as we get older we lose the energy and then we die right that's what that's what happens for for most people right. so if you don't if you don't abuse it if you start treating it more as this kind of sacred energy right because we all come out of uh sexual organs we're made through sex as well you know right. and start uh honoring it as this true like tantric universal principle then you can start to save it nurture it and uh get to know it a little better really get to know this part of ourselves that we've repressed for like thousands of years yeah. right and someone and yeah i think we have to remember when people are getting into this that that um we are like when you start to really work on your sexual energy, and this is a science, by the way, people like Sorry. that you can. I, I am don't know, listening to you. I'm putting the light on. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, I'm like in candlelight. <laughs> but um, when when people are just getting started with this, I think we have to remember first of all that it it really is a science. We're not just talking about making sexual energy sacred. There really is a science that people can go find out about and discover and yeah. and don't believe us don't believe what you read, go experiment with it and record your own results. You will see it's a science, um, most likely. And maybe that science yeah. works slightly differently for different people, but more or less it's a science. And we have to remember that when you start working on it, back to what is actually normal, not common, but normal is that we realize we've been in, um, I don't know, thousands of years, millions of years process of it, of a regressive energy of sexual energy of it um fraying and devolving basically so it's okay to be easy on ourselves when we start where we're like what was what world was i born into where this is the norm <laughs> and so i think we have to remember right. when you start working on it how first of all how amazing it is because it's uh you're really reversing some million let's say millions of years of this process going down 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 and reversing it back up so it's a big task to take on, but it's definitely worth it. And I'm just in the beginning. I don't know much, but, but I do know that this is true. Um, that this is a true science. Right. I know that much because I have recorded my own results, but I'm still finding out more about it and I'm very humble to it. I, or I try to be, maybe some egos are not, but um, I try to be, but um, yeah, I, re I really right. think it's the missing piece. Um yeah and it's out there for people to find and um yeah good luck <laughs> basically <laughs> um is there any more is there anything else before i go with maybe my final question is there anything else you wanted to bring up or any final thoughts before um i'm not sure really i think uh i think we covered a lot right and, we did uh, <laughs> And I, yeah, it's definitely, I really do believe that when people recognize the, the truth and really, like you just said, you, you know, it's true. And it's uh, really something that you're going to explore more uh, experiences and uh, knowledge and people and all the right things will fall into place because you've been developing this will to know and this desire to know right as we've been talking about in this conversation and um you know the the highest as we you said uh, at the start this willpower within us when we start taking back that willpower 
you know, and when we start taking back our thoughts, uh, we really do start to, it's very new age, like, uh, you know, new age wisdom to say like what you think you attract, but it really, <laughs> that is really, <laughs> it's the truth as well. Yeah, you, know, totally. you, really, you will really start to, you know, the past 10 years has been just, if I never took this path, I, I would, my life would just be completely different and so many synchronicities and meeting the all the people that I've met along the way and the the information and uh, just every book new book that I just seem to randomly pick up just has all the answers for me it all comes eventually as long as you stay in faith that nature does have this science and this mm -hmm. very particular way to to help you and and in your with it with your inner being too and uh and not be doubtful too much and not be confused i see it in my kind of field of you know so many questions and messages the main culprit is really just fear fear of the unknown uh doubting oneself too much overthinking it too much and always trying letting the ego mind always think like how is this going to happen i don't want this to happen i i really value this belief or that belief and you know we're trying to go beyond beliefs so trust that whatever will come is going to be exactly right for you specifically and mm -hmm. realizations in the consciousness is always a much deeper source of happiness than any ego thing that you thought was that you always kind of cling to onto in the past you know right. so yeah trust in the process <laughs> yeah. yeah oh beautiful yeah. thank you for I was gonna ask you what your final piece of wisdom is I don't know if there's another <laughs> <final> <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> but mean. that was pretty good um <laughs> yeah yeah. But yeah, thank you so much, Jean. It was so nice to see you again. Last time was in person. Um, <laughs> right. And yeah, I, I'm definitely going to mention all your stuff. It's really amazing what you're doing. And I'm so happy. I might even link some other people that I think are really worthwhile. Um, I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to put a whole list of resources in the show yeah. notes with yours at the top. I send people like very specific videos of yours all the time. It's really, you have a really amazing way of um, making it accessible to people who are just beginning mm. and making the information really succinct and um, grounded. Yeah. So yeah. thank you.